Have you ever wondered how we learn about the health of our rivers, lakes, estuaries, and coastal waters? Monitoring water quality along the Nanticoke helps us answer the question, is this water safe to swim in or fish from? Outdoor recreational activities provide a way to stay active and healthy while also giving us a chance to experience our natural environment. Monitoring water quality is also used to determine whether our waterways are clean enough for fish and other aquatic life, or if we need to make adjustments to ensure these resources will be here for future generations. One of the ways we monitor water quality is to use automated equipment at a fixed station where samples are continuously taken day and night. The Nanticoke River here is a tributary that's mostly in Delaware at, the, at, the, at its headwaters and goes out to the Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay has problems with too much nutrients coming in from its, its various tributaries. And the question really is, to what extent is Delaware contributing to the problems of the Chesapeake Bay? And the way to determine that is to measure the amount of nutrients that are coming downstream from here get it, eventually get into, into uh, Chesapeake Bay. There, there are two wells out here. The one on the right is actually a fire uh, uh, intake, fire water intake, and that's not our well. The one on the left is ours, uh, the, and it has a, a metal cap on the top. Our pump is actually underwater. It's, you'll see this, this gray pipe that runs down along the, the bridge and comes here. That gray pipe is our intake. So from, the, from this instrument, the instrument turns on the pump when it's ready for a sample. Mm -hmm. It lets it run for seven minutes to rinse everything out, and then it stops the pump, takes the sample, and then analyzes that sample. The instrument is called an Aqualab. It's made by a company in Australia called Greenspan Analytical. And it was actually designed by a chemist to do kind of routine water analysis at a high frequency where you frequency higher than you can do when you're just sitting there taking a sample by yourself. So basically you can see is all the reagent storage, which is the chemical storage and the waste storage, which is down here. There's a temperature control cabinet and the temperature controller here. This is actually the computer section. The computer is actually accessible from the rear, not from the front. And then there's the analytical module, which is basically looks a little bit like spaghetti in there. But what it is is a series of pumps, valves, and sensors that mix reagents appropriately, deliver them to a sensor, then the sensor does its measurement, the computer records that, and then send, we can download that from our office. So this is data from uh, the first couple of weeks that we were out here. So this is from August to into September. And some of the things here we can see, we measure dissolved oxygen every 23 times a day. We measure specific conductivity, which is just a, uh, an estimate of the total dissolved salts. And you'll see that there are two little blips where the specific conductivity dropped down. Those were rainfall events. pH also varies with biological activity and has a, a daily cycle. And every now and then we see a, a value that's ridiculous. And the, the instrument actually has a, a run standards and checks itself to make sure it's doing a good measurement. In this particular case, it sucked in a bubble. We also measure ammonium, which is it's hard to see what, the, what there's much of a pattern that, because the concentrations are relatively low. So we're really just kind of just above the detection limit for the machine. And we also measure phosphate concentrations. And the phosphate doesn't respond as nicely as, say, does the nitrate. Uh, but there are trends where usually when there's a rainfall event, we have a dilution in nitrate concentration, but the phosphates tend to go up a little bit. Basically, this, is, this period is, is a pretty normal operation. When, when we have problems, it shows up on graphs like this, so we can actually see what the problem is remotely because we can download the data, determine what we need, what the possible problems are, and bring out the, what we need to fix them. I mean, I've, I've been out here sampling every hour for 24 hours. Um, that takes two people or three people. Uh, this, I can more or less, or Joanna can more or less service this entire instrument by themselves and have it run for two weeks on an hourly basis. So you still so this is an additional level of checking because the instrument runs its own standards and runs its own check samples. But what this is really comparing is with not just the quality of the instrument results, but how well they compare with other types of analyses that are more traditional. To do this, it requires several people, and it also requires um, a lot of materials. You have to wash the bottles, you have to get them clean, you have to uh, uh, collect the sample. After that, you have to clean the bottles. 6.7 degrees centigrade. It's ch getting chilly. Yeah. 
Um, oxygen saturation 83.1. So now we're going to collect the sample for nutrient analysis in the lab. And we also collect the sample to do um, some of the particulate. We did a project here some years ago where we sampled every hour at this site for 24 hours at a time uh, using a pump system. And I think in the whole in a year, I think we got six storms that we could sample. We've already in three months gotten six storms and sampled at a higher frequency. So that's really the big advantage. These kinds of instruments, everybody's working on this. We had a visitor from uh, from France here this earlier this week, and he's working with a group that's doing designing sensors, not just to do um, chemical analyses, but actually to start looking at DNA to identify the organisms that are present, the phytoplankton, the bacteria, et cetera, that are present. And I think we're, 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 we're at the beginning of a whole revolution in how we, we do this kind of routine monitoring.